Yo, what up, YouTube? I just got done redoing my studio, both the live room and the control room. Uh, it's probably the cleanest it's ever gonna be again, so I thought I would take this time to uh, kind of give you a quick tour. Check it out. So, walking into the live room, first thing here, I got uh, this organ my friend was kind of giving away as he was moving out. Uh, I use mostly plugins for that kind of thing, so it's more of a decoration, but it looks damn cool and it covers this gross spot on the ground. Well, sort of. I just finished redoing this bass here. Um, it's a, a Japanese Jaguar bass. It used to be black, but then I had it painted yellow. And then I wanted to get a new bass, but I had money for paint. I didn't have money for a bass, so I just painted it seafoam green uh, at the suggestion of a couple friends. Ooh, I got this, this here Strat, Tom DeLong, signed by the man himself. I have this uh, Squire Base 6 that I painted sh uh, shell pink. Uh, it was originally white, but I was the first guitar I painted. I'm kind of into painting guitars, if that's not apparent. Um, and then I, oh, there's a Gordon Smith here. This is a guitar that was made for me in the UK. It's the same guitar that Aaron Barrett from Real Big Fish was playing for a while. And uh, I'm really into them, so I have them do that. And then of course you got the Legends itself, the J45. Actually needs some fret work done. Up here there's a little bit of a bump developing, so I'm gonna have to either take it to a tech or see what's good. Maybe I'll do it myself. I got some tools coming in, so we'll see. I was throwing away a, an old piece of crap drum set, uh, and I heard of a miking technique where you can kind of use uh, shells of a kick drum to like kind of enhance uh, the sound of your kick as you're recording. So I grabbed the kick drum shell and I'm using it to kind of amplify the out kick mic. Uh, got the band's logo in there. Some bass traps on the wall, as well as some Oralex foam. Me and my father made these out of Owens Corning uh, 703 acoustic sound panels, uh, built a wooden frame for them kind of put them all around. They really do a really great job of like absorbing sound. It's actually pretty, pretty dead in here. Um, what else? Oh yeah, this is a, the, the amp I used on tour for Uncle Joel's comb, but now I'm playing a lot more bass and when I, whenever I record, I actually use a Kemper. And this is a big hunk of junk that I don't want to carry up and down any more stairs. Uh, cool, look at a little fake palm tree there. And of course, Mario and Sonic. This is my kind of rolling rack here. I've got a uh, Furman uh, power conditioner, the Apollo 16, followed by a D-Box, which has uh, analog summing on it. Um, it also just kind of like cleans up the audio. Also a patch band <laughs> that I haven't really figured out yet. Uh, I gotta get my friend Nick over here. And he's gonna, I mean, I can figure it out. I just, I never really paid attention to him in school. And now I don't really know how to set it up, but I, you know, I know how to read, so we'll figure it out. Got the Kemper! Boom! Game changer, for sure. Love this thing. Uh, literally, have, literally have not stopped using it uh, for any recording, you know, just, there's no, no reason to in my mind, you know, people say tube sound, analog, but that thing's so darn close, you know, and then also, <laughs> speaking of tube sound, here's a tube pre that I actually really like, so, uh, you know perhaps contradictory, but still very awesome sound. Followed by an API for channel three, um, and a power amp for the NS10s, which I have next to my JBLs, which are the first monitors I ever bought. And I'm kind of, you know, horrified of switching monitoring situations uh, just because I'm so used to what I have going now. So, you know, it's kind of like the uh, concept of mixing in your car where you, you know, are so used to something the way it's supposed to sound. Uh, solder station for when I'm doing my electronic stuff. I uh, finally got a, <laughs> a desktop. I was doing a lot of albums on a laptop and we would get, you know, halfway through a drum session or, you know, a session and the drummer would, you know, be on his magical take. And all of a sudden, yeah, I would run out of bandwidth or whatever. So that's a nightmare. Oh, and over here is the reason I actually never get anything done. It's uh, kind of like <laughs> all my, all my beautiful video games. There they are. I actually built this purple shelf here, kind of custom shaped to the sizes of, you know, the different games and whatnot. And, it, you know, it is really a miracle that I get anything done at all, because I, you know, 
Uh, there are some games in here I honestly haven't played yet, so it's uh, like I said, it's a miracle that anything gets done in this studio. I mentioned that I paint guitars, but I also am kind of a big fan of like painting video game consoles. This this was a purple before, and I painted it, and I slapped a logo on it so it looks like Mario. And <laughs> here's the real bread and butter. When you click this button. I, you know, I put a sound module in there so that when you turn it on, it activates it. It feeds off of the LED and it makes a coin sound. I also have this bad boy, which has lights and events and whatnot, so I'm pretty stoked on that. <sighs> That's pretty much everything. Nothing too, too crazy. Anyways, so just want to give you a glimpse into where I do things. Um, apologize for the iPad quality video, uh, but I just thought it'd be a fun little thing to do. Um, so anyway, yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, make sure you smash that like button, obliterate that subscribe button, because uh, we got a lot of stuff coming out. Uh, Millington's got a new single coming out Tuesday, uh, which is my favorite song so far. I hope it's yours too. Um, if you have any questions at all, like uh, mixing, mastering, uh, recording, um, gear, anything, I don't know, video games, let me know. Leave a comment. Thank you. Sorry.